everybody. Welcome back to Connerby Meadows Farm. Today's video, we are going to be spinning the honey that we have taken out of the hives. Now, please keep in mind, this is only our second year as beekeepers, and it is our first year of actually spinning anything and doing anything. So we learn a lot along the way as we're doing this video, which some of you older and more experienced beekeepers may have a good laugh at our rookie mistakes, but we laugh about it, we learn from it, and we got some really great honey. I found my spinner on Marketplace for rather inexpensive compared to a brand new spinner. We had to strap it together with some zip ties. Zip ties to the rescue. Why not, right? I hope that you have a good laugh at all of our beginner newbie mistakes. This is a stainless steel pail and this is the honey filter that you put on top. Now the honey filter comes with actually two filters, one that takes out the bigger particles and then the one underneath with the smaller particles. And that just sits on top of the stainless steel pail. Here is our spinner. And you can see there's a basket inside. If you look, you can see the lovely yellow zip ties there holding it together. When you spin the handle, ours is a manual, so you spin the handle and then the inside spins. Now we had purchased this knife that's supposed to uncap the honey um, and obviously with our first time we're just figuring it out. I didn't really like how much honey came off on the cappings. I just wanted more wax and um, less honey to come out. It was really messy. It didn't seem to do a really good job and I wasn't super happy with the results of it. Um, we ended up trying uh, another knife and just trying to do it differently. Uh, we made it work, but it wasn't what I would call the cleanest or the neatest or even the fastest at doing the honey. Regardless, we got the frames cleaned off and we put them in the spinner. Now, for those of you that have done this before, I'm sure you can spot the mistake. For those of you that haven't, let me point the mistake out to you. Well, the two frames are in there and they are facing opposite directions. They are not one on one corner and one on the other. So the load is not balanced. We go ahead and we start to spin. And what happens is not only is the load not balanced, but it starts shimmying all over the floor. So we need to correct this problem. We grab one of our anti-fatigue mats. We put it down and it works a little bit better. You can still see we are very, very much off center, but this is a complete learning curve for us. We can see that it's spinning and the honey is coming off. You can see it on the side of the barrel that the honey is coming off, but it just wasn't working properly. It was working good enough that we continued on, but not as well as it should have. You have to flip them the other way to get the honey on the outside edges too. Yeah, yeah. Don't push on that. Okay, so what's the, what's the outside ones look like? So the inside's still chocker block full of honey. And the outside looks, I mean, other than the ends, mm -hmm. you probably can flip them around, though. Huh? And right here, we have a aha moment where we discover what we've done wrong. Oh, there's a... Where they sit? Uh huh. That's why it was. Uh... Okay, hold on a second. Are you off balance? Do you have one on each of the right sides? And yes, he is off balance, but he continued on until the spin was done and then we put them in properly. 
some of you may notice in the background that this is a busy time of year for us and uh, there is my big canning pot some empty jars that had milk in them because we have cheese being made at the same time and the milking machine down on the ground that I still need to wash from the morning milking. So it's a busy time of year here on the farm and uh, throwing some spinning honey in along with that is uh, just adding a little fun to the game. Now you can actually see significant difference here. We have actually at this point figured out that we had to balance the frames and sink them down into their appropriate holes and it works a lot better. Funny that when you actually do something the way it's supposed to be done that it works out as it should. So you can see we're on opposite sides now and they're locked into place and they're actually fairly clean when they come out except for where I did not get the cappings off. So we just have to go ahead and finish taking the cappings off. And this is cappings. So this is the wax that you have to take off the top in order for the honey to be able to spin out. I sent a message to my friend Ange, who's a beekeeper, and I said, hey, this knife sucks. What can I do? And she sent me a TikTok video of her using this special uncapping fork. Well, obviously, I didn't have the uncapping fork. What I did have was a kitchen fork. So I went ahead and I uncapped the rest of the frames for the rest of the day using a kitchen fork. Surprisingly, it worked really, really well and I was very fast with it. Uh, would I want to do it again? N not necessarily, but in a pinch, using uh, a fork to uncap your honey? Definitely, go for it. Worked great. Uh, I call it a little bit of... Uh, Necessity is uh, the key to a lot of inventions and it makes me wonder if someone at some point didn't actually have to use a kitchen fork and then made their own uncapping fork. And you can see how easy it was to uncap and I'm not wasting a lot of honey and it's not super messy. This was our setup after we had spun. So we have the honey in the container up and there it comes. Out comes the honey. We were actually really uh, surprised at how much we got. You can see, yeah, there's still some cappings, but all in all, it was uh, fairly clean considering what I was using to uncap it. So the top part catches the cappings and then the bottom filter uh, filters it a little bit better. Here you can see a bunch of cappings coming out. Um, and then when you get down to the bottom of the barrel, things get a little interesting. So this was our way of uh, draining the honey and not having it fall. Honey on the bottom, bright yellow cappings on the top. Now you can see them again there. So after we've spun the honey out of all of the frames, we want the frames cleaned up to store. So in other words, we don't want any honey left in them. So what we do is we put the super here in the garden, well away from the hives, and we let them do what's called robbing. So these guys are gonna go in there, and those are all honeybees, and they're probably all our honeybees. We'll let these guys go in there they're gonna clean off all the honey that they want, including the wasps as well. And uh, mostly this is honeybees I'm seeing, but there is the odd wasp going in as well. And then we'll be able to safely store the um, frames away for the winter. But we need to make sure they get all the honey off first. So it's a little bit like having a beehive right here right now. You can see the bottom part is open. They can go up through the bottom. The entry is open. And then there's a little bit on the top there that's open as well. So they're helping themselves. After spinning honey out of all the frames, this is what our stack looks like. So we've cleaned all of these hives out. And they are doing what's called robbing now. Any honey that's left. Quite a busy place. Mostly it's honeybees. 
they're working very hard at cleaning it all up. In this situation where you actually want to encourage them to clean, it's very important in the way that you stack these. And you can see that they are stacked, alternating and open. Thanks for hanging out with us on the farm doing apiary stuff. And uh, we really appreciate you uh, watching and we'll see you next time.